Today I'm going to be walking you through the NASA FOILSIM software. Uh, this is a free software provided by NASA that is an airfoil simulator. Um, this simulator will allow us to make changes to our airfoil and see what impact that has on the, the lift and the drag. Uh, it will also show us the values that different shapes and different changes to our airfoil will have on the, the velocity and the pressure of the airfoil, both above and below the airfoil. This will help us understand how an airfoil can be um, shaped to generate lift. So we're going to go ahead and click on the link. Uh, I will um, control and left click. And I'm going to open this up next to the Word document. So as I go through these instructions, I'm going to be completing them on the simulator. And I will be recording my data on my, um, my Word document as I go along. I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing. Um, pretty much just going to show you the first um, portion where the different buttons are located in the simulator uh, and then I will let you um, explore and investigate on your own. Alright, so first off, um, what I need to do is I need to click the reset button. Um, a reset button is actually going to be your friend uh, while you're using FOIL simulator because we're going to be using the simulator um, a couple times during this unit. Um, and as you make different changes to your your airfoil and explore and kind of change things around and see what effects they have, you may want to get back to like the default setting, um, especially if you kind of like move stuff around and end up kind of having trouble seeing your your airfoil uh, after you've you've moved it around, having trouble with center it or so forth. You can hit the reset and it puts all the values back to the default setting. Um, so I'm going to start by clicking reset um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value for the angle to zero. So down here where it says the angle in degrees, right now we've got a five degree angle of attack. I'm going to change that to zero. Anytime you enter any values in here, one thing that's really, really important is that you press enter afterwards. Uh, otherwise they don't actually take effect and you may think that they're um, going into effect and if you like click somewhere else. Um, if you didn't press enter, you're, you'll find out that it didn't change the value for you. So make sure you press enter. Now if I click somewhere else and I went back to shape again, I would notice my, my angle is at the zero degrees which I wanted it to be. So after you change the value, just make sure you press enter each time. Um, number two, we're going to launch the probe by clicking on the button that says probe. Okay, so that is located over here in my, my output values in red, probe. I'll click that and um, my probe um, options are down here, velocity, pressure, smoke, okay. Um, we're going to click on the word velocity so I can use a velocity probe to measure um, how much velocity is at certain points um, around my airfoil, okay. So I've clicked velocity now. Let me scroll down so I got some room, okay. And now I'm going to use a slider bar um, to under the velocity gauge, it's actually um, to the left and underneath the um, velocity gauge. And I am going to move it until it reaches the first wind line directly under the thickest portion of the airfoil. So my thickest portion of the airfoil uh, is located right here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to grab the slider at the bottom so I can move it horizontally and I'm going to line it up so it's around the thickest portion. Okay, get as close as I can, doesn't have to be completely perfect. Uh, and now my vertical dragger will allow me to move the probe up and down and I want it to be on the first set of lines that are um, underneath my airfoil at the thickest part. Uh, so that's good. Um, now I want to record the velocity at that point in the table below. Uh, right here underneath my gauge, I can see my velocity. It is 1 and 156 thousandths times 10 to the second power miles per hour. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and record that as my velocity underneath um, the wing. So I've got 1.156 times 10 
And I can't really do to the second power. Um, the way to show that on the computer is you do a caret uh, 10 to the second power. Uh, another way you might want to write this as opposed to, um, you know, times 10 to the second power in scientific notation would be 10 squared is actually uh, 10 times 10, which is 100. So it's 1.156 times 100. Uh, you may have learned in your math class um, when it's 10 to the second power, that means I'm going to be moving the decimal point two places to the right. So this is actually the same as 150. 15.6 miles per hour. So that might be a nicer way for you to um, write it as opposed to in scientific notation. Um, I also now want to, number four, um, record the pressure that is underneath my, my wing. So I'll click on that. And once again, scientific notation, but it's 10 to the first power, which is the same as, um, as 10. So I will record this either in scientific notation as 1.464 times 10 to the first power, same as just times 10, um, 10 to the first power, miles per hour. Or I could write this as, uh, since this is the first power, um, or just times 10, that means I'm moving my decimal place one place to the right. So it would be 14.64. And I need to backtrack because this is definitely not miles per hour. It is PSI pressure, pounds per square inch, PSI. Uh, for above the wing, I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to um, move my gauge to the um, to one wind line above the airfoil. I don't want to move my probe left or right. That's important. I want to make sure that's in the uh, same location, measuring the same um, thickness that I got. So I'm going to grab my vertical slider, move it up, and get it about to the first line. Okay, my pressure's already here, so I'll record that first. Okay, I'm just going to do it without the scientific notation this time, but I need to be very careful that I moved my decimal over properly if I do it that way, 14.64, and then I want velocity as well, so I'll click that and I'll record my velocity. Uh, 10 to the second power, so I'll move it over two places, 115.3 miles per hour. Okay. All right, so here we go. Um, in this configuration, is there lift? If I look over here under lift, it actually says zero pounds. Um, so uh, right now I'm not generating any lift. I am generating some drag though, 42 pounds. Um, so under lift, I can write no, no lift. And I'm going to record it says, if so, how much? I'm going to actually record the amount, um, zero pounds, um, so that I know the exact exact value. Now where it says why, you want to generate some thoughts of why you think this, um, this Air Force is not generating lift, but then also why you know it's not um, generating any lift based on what we learned um, previously. So in this case, we know that lift is generated through Bernoulli's principle, okay, which means the um, the airfoil shape allows for the air traveling above the airfoil to move at a faster velocity than the air traveling below the airfoil. Well, in this case, the air above the airfoil was 115.3 miles per hour, and below was 115.6 miles per hour. So actually, the air above the wing is traveling just slightly less than below the wing. Um, if we look at the pressure, and since these values are basically almost the same for velocity, the pressure is not surprising. It ends up being roughly the same. And if there's not a pressure differential, um, the airfoil is not going to generate any lift. Um, you want to have um, lower air pressure above the wing than below the wing. And in this case, it didn't happen. So for why, I could write um, the velocity and pressure above and below the, the airfoil are about the same. Um, with no pressure difference, the air 
foil will not generate any lift. Okay, so then the question is why was this airfoil, um, why else did this airfoil not generate any lift? And part of the reason is um, this airfoil is symmetrical. The air foil is symmetrical. So the air above and the air below have the same distance to travel. To, um, from the leading edge to the trailing edge. All right, so that is why we didn't get any lift. Um, so after you've answered this question, you're going to go ahead and go down, continue changing the values as they've shown, change the camber. If you read through, camber is here. Um, and move the probe to make sure you get your values recorded um, and keep going through. Make sure you follow the directions because sometimes you want to change things back to zero before you make another change. Uh, where it says change angle of attack, um, that is the angle, angle right here, okay, the degrees. Uh, and then lastly, the last thing you're going to need to know is number 11 says uh, leave the angle of attack at 10 and change the speed to 150. Um, in order to change the speed, you need to click on flight. So you would change the angle of attack, um, which you should have already previously done in um, the previous table, uh, to 10. But then you click on flight and you can change the speed there. Um, just make sure you press enter after any changes that you make. Go ahead and conduct, conduct those um, three additional experiments. Uh, when you're finished, I want you to take a look at the conclusion questions and answer them based on what you learned during this investigation and what you know about uh, Bernoulli's principle from the previous day's class.